Thank you, Amit. Today, I'm going to share how Zscaler was critical in National Oil Varco being prepared for the COVID-19 outbreak. This is our legalese. Thank you for reading all of that. For those of you who do not know, NOV is known as National Oil Varco, and we are a leading provider of technology, equipment, and services to the global oil and gas industry. We like to think that we power the industry that powers the world. Uh, we are in 65 countries around the world with 36,000 employees across 630 locations, and we're Fortune 357. Uh, ignore our market cap. It has not uh, been kind to us recently. And critical for us is we've grown rapidly via acquisitions, 300 plus acquisitions in the last 20 years. Thanks to Zscaler, they helped us with our cloud transformation journey. We were mostly prepared for the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, in 2016, we began our journey by adopting uh, Office 365 as a SaaS solution. During that same year, we started what we, start, what we called a smart public cloud usage approach. So not all in, but using public cloud where it makes sense. We also started deploying Zscaler internet access in 2016 to protect all of our users no matter where they're at in the world. And in 2018, we rolled out Zscaler private access to give us remote access to our internal apps. When we think about our security transformation, um, we were historically a lot of expensive appliances scattered all over the world. And we couldn't afford to constantly upgrade these appliances, but we knew that everything was moving towards the internet. And so we approached Zscaler for help, and Zscaler said, we have a way that you can have all your locations, your compute, and your users go directly to the cloud. And you can get rid of all these appliances. Not only that, we can deliver you faster user experience as you transform your network and we can offer SSL inspection. And that was critically important to us at that time. We, our users, while we have 36,000 employees, uh, we only have about 27,500 users. And many of those are outside of our network and had no protection as they were outside. And with Zscaler, we were able to deploy the Z app on all these endpoints, and they were protected no matter where they were at, whether they were in the office or where they were outside of our, our office comfortable environment, and um, they were mobile. And on the right, you can see, we see many, many attacks for our mobile users that previously were not being protected against. And this is probably the most important slide to us. Our journey towards securing our enterprise has been a long one. And this is probably a meta, a, or, um, meta KPI that we track. And beginning in January 2013, we we're looking at how many computers we re-image a month because of malware on the device that antivirus couldn't protect. And through lots of work and implementing various layers of security, by August 2016, when we were implementing Zscaler, we felt we were in a very, very good position. Little did we know that by putting Zscaler in, it would actually take us to near zero re-images on a monthly basis. And so I'm very, very proud and thankful for Zscaler for helping us with this. And I give most of the credit to this to SSL decryption because now we're able to see the evil that's hiding in the encrypted traffic. The next thing we really started on the journey was Zscaler told us that, hey, if you'll transform your network, we can protect you no matter where you're at. So we started looking at how do we move from our old legacy MPLS hub and spoke to SD-WAN. And SD-WAN was very, very advantageous for us because of cost. We're in the oil and gas manufacturing industry and we had to drive out cost. Our major concern was the internet. How do we protect if we don't have appliances protecting all these facilities on our journey to Office 365 and other cloud SaaS and, and Azure and AWS. And when we approached Microsoft with this, they said, oh, we've got the solution for you. You're going to use ExpressRoute. When we looked at ExpressRoute, that felt like we were going backwards and it was very expensive. 
When we talked to Zscaler, Zscaler said, no problem, Alex, ignore express route, just point everything to us and we'll route the traffic where it needs to go. And as we've been on this journey, our goal is to get a local breakout at every single one of our facilities. Currently, we have 230 breakouts. It has reduced the cost by 4x. The user experience has gone through the roof, 10 to 20 times faster user experience. And we're seeing in six months, 479 terabytes of traffic going to the cloud. Um, absolutely phenomenal results, better than we could have hoped for. The next part of our journey was trying to transform our legacy VPN journey. And we started noticing that our users were confused. As we're moving more to SaaS applications, the users didn't know if it was inside of our data center or on the web. And Office 365 SharePoint's a great example. Uh, you start moving sites from on-prem up to Office 365. There is no proxy easy way when you access SharePoint on Office 365 to get to your legacy internal SharePoint sites. So a user is on the internet, on Office 365 SharePoint, they click a link and then they get a failure message and they don't know why. And it's because it's trying to go back inside your network. So we said, well, there's gotta be a better way to where the users don't need to know if they need a VPN or not. And we decided that the experience was just not where it needed to be. We needed to move away from it on the network or off the network. And we also noticed that our old legacy VPN appliances were starting to have vulnerabilities that the bad guys were trying to exploit. And so we decided to move forward with Zscaler, a ZPA, and our users are never on our network anymore. We don't have to worry about VPN gateway appliances. And it's a fast experience that really reduces a lot of risk. We discovered that we had 7,500 private apps that ZPA was used to get to. And over the course of a month, we would see 20,000 different users using this solution. Now, when COVID-19 broke out, we really had to start thinking, okay, how are we gonna adapt? We started seeing quite a bit of the European, um, the facilities very concerned. We're in China, our China facilities were shut down and all of our Chinese employees had to use ZPA to get back to their resources. And we were really concerned what's gonna happen if this really goes worldwide, if this really turns into an epidemic. And so in the uh, latter parts of February, we started discussing what do we need to do? How do we need to prepare? And when I pulled together my IT team, they said, Alex, I think that we're okay. We've moved to ZPA and Zscaler can handle this for us. So I was able to go to my IT group and say, okay, well, we need to make sure. We're gonna have more users using ZPA than we've ever had. And I was able to go to my uh, leadership team and say all 27,500 of our users, if they need to work remote, they can do it. And it's all because of Zscaler. And they were absolutely stunned. Uh, our old legacy solutions were not able to handle that. And so just to make sure that we were able to do this, my team upgraded some of the memory on our virtual app connectors, and we added some new ones. And the other thing that really struck us was only 70% of our machines are notebooks. And we have a lot of engineers and they use desktops. And these are very powerful desktops with very, very expensive and complex engineering applications on them and licensing servers that you have to check licenses out for. And we quickly realized that we were not gonna have notebooks that they could all use. And so we said, well, we're gonna, we're gonna face the reality that our engineers are gonna have to take their engineering systems home with them to work. How are they gonna connect back? And so we said, all right, we need to roll Z app out to all of our desktops. We had never done that before. Uh, we were able to do that very rapidly. And we had a couple of engineers take them home and we had some great learnings. Um, most people in their home only have Wi-Fi and none of our desktops have built-in Wi-Fi. So we quickly had to instruct everyone, okay, take a long ethernet cable home or 
go grab a USB Wi-Fi adapter for these desktops. Um, we, we did this in a couple of locations and it worked very, very well. Um, and so that was a huge learning for us that desktops would now be part of our mobile workforce, which we had never planned for or imagined. Um, our legacy old on-prem is totally gone and it was designed to handle a normal load. And that was under 2000 users at any one point in time. And that was normally peak during a regional ice storm or a flood, but it was never designed to handle a global pandemic. Um, if we were still on this old solution, there is no way with the supply chain constraints that we have today that we would be able to get the hardware needed to supply the VPN connections for our users. With Zscaler, we can add a virtual app connector anywhere. And as we've added more and more of our network to have a direct internet connection, my teams have been really exploring, should we add another connector at this facility? It's not one of our major data centers, but they have local apps and this will allow them to get there quickly. This chart at the bottom are the last two weeks. And you'll see that last week was really, really high for us. In a 10 day period, we added 3.2 times the users. We went from a peak of under 2,000 users to over 6,100 users simultaneously connected. Not only that, generally at our minimum, we were under 1,000 users connected. Now at our minimum, we're at 3,000 users simultaneously connected. And today is a peak, we saw over 7,000 people connect at the same time. The situation for COVID-19 is very fluid and we need extreme flexibility. And we expect that as this moves forward that we're gonna see a doubling effect week after week. And it's gonna change the way that our company operates and works. Um, we're extremely excited about what lies ahead for us and how we're actually helping prepare for our zero trust journey and how everyone is outside of our network. Um, we want to really be thankful to Zscaler for all their help in this. And um, there's no way that we would be able to have the happy users that we have today if it wasn't for that. Thank you, and I'll pass it back to you, Jay.